Well, what are you thinking, Kitty? Are you upset about more Texas literature than Oklahoma literature? Hmm? Hmm? Are you... You think I'm just projecting? That's probably just me projecting. <sighs> Cats. Hello, everyone. Britain here, also known as Some Okie Dude. Uh, today on another episode of Britain Talks About an Underrated Book That No One Is Reading and Britain Thinks Should people should go read because it's a pretty good book and he can't really find it anywhere else on YouTube, so I guess I'll just do it myself. I'm your host, Britton, also known as Some Okey Dude, and I am back talking about an underrated book. And the underrated book I'm talking about today is uh, All Things Left Wild by James Wade. Uh, came out in 2020. I should note before I do this review, I do know this guy. Um, I will admit... Uh, uh, I would consider us friends, uh, though I read this book, funnily enough, before uh, we became friends, um, and I, I really liked it, but I'm going to try and not let my personal fondness of the man um, get in the way of, of this review, e even though I do like him, and we actually had a podcast together uh, a few nights ago, which will be out in the future, um, when, I, I don't know, but it will be in the future, so yeah, um... But I thought this was a good book, and I thought it was a good book even before I met him. So, you know, I just wanted to let everyone know, so just, there you go. But yes, I'm talking about All Things Left Wild today, um, which I haven't really seen a lot of people talking about. I haven't seen a lot of people talk about James Wade's work in general. Um, this is the only one I have read so far, and I uh, quite enjoyed it. So I, I guess we should get on with the review for four, eh, before too long. The first word I would use for all things left wild is familiar. Uh, to use a f Hollywood pitch, uh, all things left wild is kind of like if Cormac McCarthy took a crack at writing True Grit. It has that adventurous tone of True Grit, but it also has that really bleak sadness that comes in a lot of Cormac McCarthy's work. Um, and it feels like a nice combination. It doesn't feel like he's, you know, riffing from one or the other. Well... I should back up there, but I'm getting ahead of myself. James Wade crafts a familiar yet no less engrossing tale about a group of characters who go on a journey that will ultimately lead to their undoing. And while this book had flaws, it held it back for me in a couple ways. I was very impressed with Wade's effort here. In this, he really proves that uh, he has a very he's a very talented storyteller, and he has a very bright future ahead of him if this was his first novel. Though, uh, he has written three since then, so I guess I shouldn't say that, uh, too quickly. There seems to be a fascination with Texas in the literary sphere, you know, and there, you know, there seems to be a lot of interest for writers to talk about Texas, and, uh, there have been a lot of great novels written about the Lone Star State, which causes a no shortage of jealousy in a humble oaky such as myself. I mean, what do we got? Grapes of Wrath? The Outsiders? Give me a break. Anyway... Books such as Lonesome Dove, All the Pretty Horses, Hell, the whole um, border trilogy, if you will, but mainly All the Pretty Horses. All the Pretty Horses takes place in Texas. Holes, 11-22-63, No Country for Old Men, I, I could go on, uh, have taken place in Texas or have been written about Texas and have been wildly successful. And All Things Left Wild has joined the, the, the tradition of excellent Texas literature. God damn it. Texas definitely has a unique history in comparison to the rest of the states. Well, maybe except for California. I mean, both of them were their own nations before the United States was like, come join us. We we got some we got some fun for you guys today. And all the all things left wild really contends with that unique history of this state, as well as the ramifications of westward at westward expansion. Though, of course, this is many years after the fact. Where I find that Wade really succeeds most in this book are with his characters. Many of them are haunted and conflicted, constantly anguished by the past and are attempting to run for it. And the man really has a deep gift for character voice and making these characters feel alive on the page. Um, but of course, a reckoning is inevitable, and if you've read many westerns, you would know that it will destroy everybody who is involved. The characterization is a bit more standard than it is in a McCarthy novel. I mean, McCarthy, he does it a lot differently than many other people in general, but I think the characterization in this book is absolutely exceptional. I especially enjoy 
how the style changes throughout the story. Uh, we see Caleb's narration is first person. Caleb is one of the main characters. Uh, Caleb, uh, Caleb Bentley is his name. And uh, Randall Dawson's narration is in the third person, but ter- third person limited. Uh, both of them are vividly portrayed, and they feel very deeply human with flaws and quirks that make them seem, you know, like genuine real people. There's a deep tragedy that bar- that marks both of our main characters, and it's sadly for the same reason that their paths have crossed. And there's a theme in this story that goes around about how a wrong decision often loops back and ends up biting you in the ass a little later. And that's something that Caleb struggles with, that's something that Randall, and also about how the cycle of pain just continues and continues and continues until it really turns into a hollow shell of yourself. There were times where I wanted both of these characters to just abandon their past, to give up this journey, because there was nothing good that was going to come of it. But, unfortunately, this book is a tragedy at its core, and much like a train wreck, can't really look. You can't really look away. The side characters are also very compelling. They also deal with their own flaws and troubles throughout the story. I particularly like the um, the young lady who joins Randall on her journey. She's a uh, black woman who also has a history with uh, Native Americans. And the Native American representation in this, I-, I thought, was pretty well done. Though I guess I am not one to speak. I am a pasty white guy at the end of the day. Wade is also not afraid to punish his characters in this, and my god, he punishes them. There are even points in this story where I went, my god, he is just relentless. Jesus, man. So, be wary of the characters you fall in love with in this book. While Wade does a good job of mixing up the true grit type of story that he's telling here, and definitely adds a more tragic and sometimes often philosophical view... The main problem with this book that really held it back for me is that re- is that James Wade seems to crib a bit too much from his influences. Now, sure, that makes sense. This is his first book. He hasn't quite figured out all the kinks yet, but it still was a problem that kind of held this book back for me. The language in this is reminiscent of McCarthy, sometimes too much. I mean, let me read a let me read a little passage for you guys. Um, let me see here. Let me hear here. Uh, let me see. All right. Randall's frustration hung about him like mites on a cur, and the breeze moved the streamers, and he could see the blood on the wood where the man had refused his help. He wanted a drink, but the town made him uneasy. He was wary of the saloon and its hardened men who would stab a patron and the sheriff who puffed his cigar and flirted with girls. And so instead he bought a clear bottle from a commer commerciante, you can tell me how to say that, James, if you watch this, who insisted he also take a string of red peppers. I mean, very McCarthy-esque. If you're a fan of McCarthy, that might bother you. I know my friend Jason was bothered when I tried pitching him this book. But if you're not bothered by this, it's a really good story. Admittedly, this is something that Wade has admitted to. I mean, this is his first novel, like I said, so, I mean, cut him some slack there. Uh, Or if you don't want to, don't. Then You know, that's fine, too. But... Wade has admitted to this. He understands. We talked about it uh, a couple times before. And I think I would be safe to say that in All Things Left Wild, Wade hasn't quite found his voice as a writer yet. He has chops as a storyteller, and the story he tells here is a fantastic and very engaging one. But he can't really seem to escape his influences here. There are even McCarthy-like vignettes where the characters stop in town and meet this crazy priest who's basically lost the will to live. If. And also characters in the story, particularly in its villain, who's this deranged former Texas Ranger who is attempting to find a sort of twisted atonement for his past crimes as a ranger by murdering people and rangers alike. Yeah, he's kind of crazy. He's a villain with... He's trying to make a new life for himself with his merry band of misfits and, well kind of. He's a villain with a vision, and he's prone to philosophical monologues about his views on life and the earth and all that, which feels very McCarthy-esque. There's an unpredictability to his character that I really like. There's there's parts where he seems sinister and fatherly at the same time, but again, it just kind of feels like a character that stumbled out of a McCarthy novel, just not quite as vicious, and I would say a bit more human 
in his motivations. He's a bit more... He's kind of like if Dutch Vanderland was a Texas Ranger and basically went off the rails as a Texas Ranger. So basically, he's te- he's basically Dutch Vanderland's journey, but on the opposite side of the law. He basically was a lawman and basically became like this guerrilla outlaw guy who murders people, but also wants a better and more purer life. So, yeah. If you're a fan of Red Dead Redemption, check this book out especially. Um, Though I will say that he does do the kind of run-on sentences very well, and he manages to make it flow very nicely through the story as well. Um, He's... uh, I would say that the villain in this story is very good, and he's very effective for the story, but I just couldn't get the McCarthy influence out of my head. It just kind of it just kind of stuck there and was haunting me as the story went along. This was one of those books that was almost a five-star read for me. I mean, it was really great, great storytelling. It really surprised me in a lot of ways. Um, and the ending especially, I thought, was very strong. Um, but it didn't quite get there, and it was kind of disappointing. I, I do, it, it's definitely a 4.5 star if I, uh, if I uh, still did star ratings. But it just didn't quite get there. I mean, I talk often about the singularity of vision in my reviews. And what I mean by that is when you read a book, you know you're in the hands of a great author when you know that only they could have written it. This is only something they could have done. Um, And that's not quite here yet. Now, again, that makes sense because uh, this is a first novel. And, you know, he's probably still figuring things out, figuring out what works, all that fun stuff. Um... But what we do have here is a very well-written, often engaging Western adventure that often leans into the tragic because, uh, like I said, James Wade just absolutely loves to punish his characters. Um, It shows that the genre of the Western still has not run out of places to go to. Um, But yeah, I think that All Things Left Wild is a pretty good book, and you guys should go check it out. Uh, not quite a masterpiece, but almost. It's it's a really good story. I mean, if you're a fan, I recommend it for fans of Red Dead Redemption and um, True Grit, or even Cormac McCarthy for that matter. But uh, yeah, that's all I got to say for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. You can check me out on Twitter. You can also find me on Instagram. You can find me on Blue Sky, even though I'm barely on there. Um, you can find me on Goodreads and Letterboxd, where I write reviews that are probably more coherent than the one you just heard right now. You can also comment, like, subscribe, as my buddy John Minton at Talking Story likes to say. It feels good when you do it. Um, might even give you a tingle. Just saying. Might give you a tingle. All right. Might be might be cribbing a little too much from John, but I think he'll forgive me. Also, I gave credit, so go away. Anyway, hope you guys liked this review. I enjoyed recording it. Uh, until next time. See you guys later.